All right, let's go to the back and look at the uh, burners. So this is the start of the burner system right here. This is the supply fan. This is the heart of the dryer. It does all the pumping of the air to support the mat, the mat, mat or your web across the air bars. It produces uh, this dryer can go up to 8,000 feet per minute. So it uh, will produce a lot of air pressure in there. And this is a 40 horsepower motor to do it. It has a pressure transmitter on the back side to tell you how much pressure it's producing. And every transmitter always comes with a backup gauge so you can check the gauge against the pressure. There's also thermocouples, some of which aren't hooked up right now, um, to read out uh, how it's doing. Um, here's the thermocouple right here. It's actually an RTD in this case. Um, the RTD measures the air temperature, and between the air temperature and the uh, supply fan pressure, we calculate nozzle velocity, which is a set point you'll set to convey your web. The higher the tension, the higher your nozzle velocity has to be. The higher nozzle velocity, the faster you dry. Come around here for some more in the dryer here. Here's your plenum. You can open up this door and uh, do maintenance inside the dryer. The burner's in there as long as the supply fan. We have an exhaust fan pressure switch. This makes sure that we are exhausting the air from the dryer, which is the number one safety feature on the entire dryer is the exhaust. If you exhaust enough air, you keep the dryer safe, you keep the room safe because you remove any contaminants from the space and invent them outside, or they go to an RTO for pollution control. We have a flame safe guard in this dryer. This is a Honeywell. It's got a remote interface here. It tells you the strength of the flame signal, so you can monitor it for maintenance purposes. We have a high temperature limit switch that makes sure that the supply fan is kept safe. This is required by NFP 86, which is the National Fire Protection Agency's code that uh, specs how dryers are to be built, monitored, and maintained. So this here is set to 625 degrees, which says that at the RPMs we're running, our supply fan can go up to 625 degrees without damaging it. There's also some switches here that help you check your gas train, which you have to do once a year according to code, to make sure that your blocking valves and things aren't leaking. There's a gas train right here. This one happens to be remote, so it's not mounted directly to the, bri to the dryer. Normally they are mounted to the dryer. This one is not. It has two blocking valves, a main blocking valve, a secondary blocking valve, it also has a vent, so it's a double block and bleed setup. There's a gas regulator, a low gas pressure switch, and a high gas pressure switch, as well as several manual shutoff valves if you have to do maintenance on it. And these are all locking. The pilot line comes off of that. It also has a regulator, and then there's some um, fed solenoids in the dryer. So this burner system right here, here's the pilot line that would connect to here. Again, we have two blocking valves and a vent valve. Once the flame safeguard approves it to light, all these valves and light up. The igniter fires off right here, causes a spark, which lights off the pilot. And then your main blocking valves open up and your control valve here will change the gas and air ratio to allow your Maxon burner here to run. Maxon's our preferred burner thing. This dryer also has humidity control, so there's a humidity sensor on here. You can see this is a nice one from Isala. It's got relative humidity set point, temperature, and dew point on it. There are several ports on the dryer for temperature controls or indicators, as well as uh, humidity, and a regulator that is supplied for your uh, exhaust damper up there. All right, there's lights on this dryer, as we pointed out before. They are mounted to the back, to a window exactly like the front. And uh, here you can look past the light if you want to, to see inside, but its main purpose is to provide light from the front. Most of the time you're not on the back side of the dryer like we are right now. This is called the drive side. You're on the operator or attending side on the front of the dryer where you'll be working most of the time. Maybe it's will come back here to check things out. All right. 
Head over here. We'll just go around the front now and uh, look at how the web goes in. Oh, well this, dryer, this dryer has a special feature. It has a burner stop emergency switch. So if you push the button, it'll stop the flame. Those are those slot sensors I was talking about before with the retraction. This uh, flag tells you where the dryer is and whether it's open or closed. You can see those little dots. When it breaks the field, it's closed or open. Now your web will come through this slot. This is called the web slot seal. This is set at a pretty ideal case of about two inches overall, maybe a little less. The arrows tell you how to set your dryer when you get it in the field. You set your web line to there on both ends. You set it to your coder roll or your rewind roll. Then it goes right in there and then we will float it without touching it for the length of the dryer until you pick it up on the other side. These are slotted and adjustable. All right, this is the exit end of the dryer. And we've reached the end of our tour in this part.